That's just my latest update. It's still a work in progress. Um, it's really it's it's mainly focused on the calibrate buttons. Um, so this new actuator eventually is just going to say calibrate, and it'll actually have a better GUI that aligns what needs to be done. So clicking on new actuator brings up this question, which is uh, please follow the steps below. If actuator is connected to a turbocharger, remove the actuator. If it's already removed, continue to step two. Um, step two is ensure the hole will ensure the hole into the gear going into the turbocharger is indexed with the hole behind the gear going to the center cartridge of the turbocharger. Now, what I mean by this is this gear right here. So, as you can see, there is a hole right there, and what you want to do is make sure the hole in the gear is lined up with that hole. I don't know how well you guys will be able to see that, but if you had a flashlight or something you'll be able to see. Well, I guess you kind of can see. Um, but basically, so if you turn this gear and it goes past that hole, um, this whole vein isn't aligned, so it's not going to work the way it should. Um, basically, if you haven't rebuilt your turbocharger and you're just re doing the actuator, as soon as it clicks like that, it should be lined up. So if it goes past that when it clicks, your turbocharger needs to be rebuilt. And basically all it is is, is the housing is not aligned together. So yeah, so you're going to align it like this, and come back over here, and wait until it focuses. Once the holes are aligned, click OK. Now once you click OK, it's actually going to be the actuator that's going to do something. Now, each actuator is different. I've had actuators that don't move. Um, some of the industrialized ones, the big duty ones, I have one around here somewhere. Uh, these guys. They'll actually spin 360 degrees. This is an HG300. This one kind of just moves a little bit. And then the 351s, they also spin quite a bit. Uh, so as you'll see, it kind of just moves a bit. And kind of barely moved. And you come back up here, and you'll see right here that you're currently in the VGT setup. Uh, the actuator will set the gear position once the actuator starts moving, reinstall the actuator, and then click OK. So basically what it's doing is it's kind of indexing itself, the actual gear to the sensors inside the actuator. So once you do that, all you got to do is just grab it. Yeah, if I have enough room. Now this is mainly for pretty much brand new actuators that are literally right out of the bag or right out of the box from whole set. Um, and essentially what it does, when it does that spin, it's basically just identifying all the available positions. So if you have an actuator that's already been working you just removed it, you probably don't need to use this step. You can just click on Calibrate 1 or Calibrate 2. Um, so once you reinstall the gear, basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come over here, click OK. And then you'll start seeing this move. And you come back up here, it'll say calibrating. Once I'm calibrating, it should have full control over it. And like I said, these steps is mainly for brand new actuators. Um, you shouldn't have to do it if you're just pulling the actuator off and testing it. Um, and then these two buttons, they're pretty much the same, it's just the calibrate 2 does an additional step. As you can see it says standby then calibrating. And then it's doing the same calibrate command. And this command is the exact same command that it gives during the new actuator. But again, the new actuator does an additional command just like this one does. And then this one just straight up tells it to calibrate. There's no first step to that. Um, yeah, so that's that. Um, so I'm going to kind of rearrange these three buttons. Um, I'm going to get rid of the load. I'm still working on the the butter rate because it's still a little slower than I want it to be. Um, so you have the whole set of VGTs, and this is.
for every series of whole set VGT as long as it has a smart actuator. This is a 6.4 um, VNT from Ford. It's uh, actually an international motor. Um, Jitika Masubus, these are GT 4082s, 40, oh, no, 3571, 3576, and there's a bunch of other ones. Um, this is off some type of Caterpillar motor, but I also believe it's the same one used for, um, ah, man, what is it? International as well. Um, so I'm going to start using the actuator numbers instead of saying the platform or well, the application. Um, and the same thing, this is actually a Dodge Spinner van. Um, I got about five more Hell actuators coming from uh, really the UK, Germany, a couple other places. And this is actually just going to be a drop down, just like this one is. So it'll be a whole Hella drop down. It'll have every Hella actuator identified. Um, this is a John Deere Turbo. This is a S300BV. And there's again a whole ton of these guys as well. Um, so once I actually get my hands on another one of these, it's going to fall into the Delphi. So the Delphi and the Hellas will both have a drop down for each one of them. Um, but yeah, that's it. So this is the, uh, the shop tool for Turbo Rebuilders. And as I identify turbos, I'm just going to keep updating them. And if you're one of the shops that has my controller, I mean, you can feel free to send me an actuator that you want to control, and I'll try to see if I can figure it out. Um, thank you.